Hey guys, this is Professor Bood live from Columbia, South America. Um, so today we're going, or this week's experiment is going to be on calorimetry. And what does that mean? Well, if you think of a thermos that you keep your hot coffee in so that it stays very hot for a long time, or when it's a really hot day outside and you put a bunch of cold uh, lemonade in your thermos and it stays cold over a long period, calorimetry is kind of like playing inside a thermos and seeing how things affect the temperature or the total energy inside the thermos. Um, so a calorimeter you can think of just a, like basically a thermos. It's just an insulated vessel, an insulated cup, um, however you would like to think about it, that just prevents the outside temperatures from getting, you know, from changing what's inside. Um, and it must contain a heat sink. And what that means is that you need to have something that you know how much heat it can absorb. So you know how you can take aluminum foil out of the um, oven because it's very thin and doesn't really hold much heat, but you can't really take uh, uh, glassware out of the oven because it holds a lot of heat. So if you take aluminum foil, it'll instantly cool, whereas taking out a thick glass um, will burn your hands because it's going to hold a lot of its heat. So what we need is a heat sink that will absorb a lot of that heat and allow us to study it carefully. So, you guys should review a few of these definitions, like bomb calorimeter. Um, it's just you know constant volume device, and um, they use that. That that's used professionally for like as a calorimeter to measure the change in temperatures of things. And they also have uh, the coffee cup calorimeter, which is essentially what we're going to be using. It's a it's a simple device that is basically like we talked about, just a thermos. So. There are a couple things that we need to know. We need to know the calorimeter constant, and that is how efficient is our calorimeter. And so if you guys go here below into the calculations section, you will see that uh, the thermal efficiency is given by the heat flow minus the heat loss over the heat flow times 100. And that's kind of a confusing uh, measure. So essentially, if you look at this top part, how much heat did the cold water gain and how much heat did the hot water lose? And so we'll, we'll go into that. That's when you mix two liquids. So if you have a, a hot and a cold liquid, so the cold liquid is inside the thermos, you add a hot liquid. And if the thermos is perfect, then you sh the, the amount that you lose from the hot water should be equal to the amount of heat that you gain in the cold water. But that's not always true, so that's where we, we need to calculate our thermal efficiency, which will probably not be 100%. So let's go back to where we were. So we really need to understand this equation right here. This equation is a it's a q it's a simple q equals m times s times delta t. The q is the heat flow or how much heat is being transferred. M is the mass of your uh, sample. Delta t is the resultant temperature and um, the resultant temperature change. It's important to know that that's a change in temperature. So let's say if I have like a um, uh, two samples, one is at 30 degrees, one is at 20 degrees, um, the resultant temperature change is going to be how much that sample at 20 degrees goes up in temperature. So if it goes up to 25, our delta T is 5 degrees. And finally, S is the specific heat of the substance, and that just tells you how much energy it's holding. So that's kind of like uh, the aluminum in the, uh, in the oven that's going to have a very low specific heat capacity whereas a glass will have a much higher heat capacity water has a very high heat capacity so that's why you never want to stick your hand into boiling water okay so let's talk about so you guys should should at least review some of these so you guys have probably seen this delta h in class that's the essentially how much energy is being given off by a certain reaction, and so that's the goal of today's of today's uh, um, lab is to determine how much heat is given off by a certain reaction. So what we first have to do is we have to set up our little calorimeters, and so let's see if I can find you guys a nice picture of calorimeters. And this is basically any of these pictures will do. Um, for your calorimeter, 
you've got, oh no, that's not a good picture. Here's a good one. So your calorimeter, like I said, it's just basically a thermos with, uh, with a liquid inside it. So here's our thermos, and here's the liquid, and you're going to have a little stirring rod that you use to mix it up and a thermometer. And the thermometer will help you determine the change in temperature, and the stirring rod will help you make sure that the water in there is nice and, uh, and mixed. So, the first thing we have to do is remember that efficiency procedure we have to, or that efficiency calculation, we have to find the efficiency. So we're going to do that by weighing out some cold water and putting it in the calorimeter, and then we're going to weigh out some more water and heat it up to about 50 to 60 degrees C and we're going to mix them together and record our t the temperature of the mixture and that will help us figure out what the uh, efficiency of our calorimeter is. So we're going to repeat the experiment twice more just to just to get a good average value um, of three runs just to make sure that you have a really good calculation. So after that we're going to determine how much heat metals hold. So this time we're going to mix or we're going to put apart 75 grams of cold water and put it in the calorimeter and then we're going to weigh out 30 grams of aluminum and we're going to heat that aluminum up by placing it in a test tube in boiling water for five minutes. So that will what that will do is just um, essentially heat up the aluminum to a, a very high temperature, uh, roughly that of boiling water, and that will help us then when we mix it, when we put in the aluminum pieces, the aluminum pellets into our cold water, it's going to, you were going to observe a change in the cold water temperature. So the, the, obviously the temperature of the cold water will increase. How much it increases depends on the specific heat of those aluminum pellets. If you remember our equation up here, um, if we have a very high specific heat, um, then our temperature change is going to be pretty high as well. Um, so, after, so we're going to determine that for aluminum and we are going to repeat it for lead or zinc pellets. And then what we're going to do after that is actually real chemistry. So, what we're going to do is we're going to mix hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide. And what that's going to do is it's going to produce a reaction. You guys know that the hydrogen mixes with the OH to form water. Well, that's actually a very uh, hot reaction. So it's going to give off some heat. And we're going to try to measure that much heat by using, using our calorimeter. We're going to try a few different other ones just to see what sort of uh, differences we get. But so for this part C, we're essentially going to mix... 0.7 uh, grams of one molar acid and points or 75 grams of one molar base um, and we're gonna then put those in the calorimeter and stir and see what the temperature changes are and then our final one will be a reaction with a metal acid and to see how that will uh, produce heat or or not produce heat um, so we have a uh, magnesium and we're going to mix that with hydrochloric acid in the calorimeter and so we're going to then of course observe and repeat this procedure using less strong uh, acid and see how much heat it gives off then the hard part I think will be the calculations so you guys will have to make sure that you really understand what you're talking about these calorimeter constants the, uh, the equation for heat loss um, and heat flow Here's our heat flow equation. Here's our uh, heat loss equation. So just make sure that you really understand what, what these equations mean because you're really going to need to know that at the end of the lab. And so you're going to calculate uh, a lot of thermodynamic data. So we're going to, hopefully, you've learned about this stuff in class. Um, if not, this will be a fun calculation. But anyhow, that's basically what we're going to do today in lab. And let's just briefly go over that again. We're going to determine the calorimeter constant. We're going to try to find the uh, heat capacity of, of uh, lead of various metals, aluminum, lead, and zinc. And then we're going to determine the, uh, how much energy is given off by a reaction with acid and base. 
And then we're going to figure out how much heat is given off with an acid and metal reaction. So that's basically all we're doing this week's lab. It's uh, fairly straightforward. Um, so hopefully you guys have fun in lab, and I'll see you on Wednesday. All right, have a good one.